Hey everybody, let's talk about GPU instancing. And right now I bet you're thinking, oh, that sounds high level. Is this like a AAA optimization thing? Well, yes, but Unity has made it super easy for you to do the same thing. And by super easy, I mean it'll take you two minutes. And it will completely change how you think about what Unity can do. So normally, when Unity needs to display something, it has to send all of that information over to your graphics card. All of the verts, all of the colors, all the textures, all the UVs, all of that stuff gets piped over to your graphics card. And then your graphics card has to ingest it and load it into local memory and then process it. Oh, it takes forever. Unity has a variety of techniques to try and accelerate that using static and dynamic batching, but those are child's play. So what's this optimization about? Well, what happens if you want to draw the same mesh and the same material over and over and over? What if you want to draw it 100,000 times? Why don't you just pass it over once and then tell the graphics card to draw it 100,000 times? Just pass it over where to draw it and not any other information. That's what GPU instancing is. You pass it over once and then you let the GPU do all of the work and it knows how to do that work perfectly. There's no difficulty at all in, in having this just spit out 100,000 copies of the same thing. How fast is it? I'm running at 60 frames a second. A solid 60 frames a second. No hiccups. How many objects do I have in the scene? A hundred thousand. Now there are some restrictions. It's always one mesh with one material. If you use multiple meshes or multiple materials, those are going to batch differently. You'll have to, you'll get a little bit less performance, but in general, it's super useful. So if you have something that you want to draw a hundred thousand times, I'm going to show you how to do that. You're going to be shocked at how easy this is. So what are we talking about? Well, uh, here, for example, we have a bunch of habitation elements. Uh, let's go over to it here in the scene view. There they are. Look at all of these guys, right? Look at all this debris. I generate this, uh, but you can manually place it if you prefer. These are all the same object. They're just debris furniture clone, right? I just have a specific mesh and a specific mesh renderer and specific materials. This one has two materials, so it does take two separate mesh instance passes or uh, GPU instance passes, but it's still super, super fast. What's the trick? How do I tell it to draw this normal everyday game object in this super cool, fast way? Just check this checkbox. That's all you have to do. If you check Enable Instancing, and it's available on nearly every material, including all the default ones, then it will automatically batch up all of the objects you've got that have the same mesh, and it'll just do them all in as few passes as possible. Uh, and it depends on the exact implementation of your shader, but I think the default Unity one is 500 objects are batched into one pass. It's pretty good. So that means that if you've got 100,000 objects like I do, then you can get it in like, uh, what do you say, 200 passes, something like that. That's, uh, that's really pretty good. And they're fast. I mean, I was running at 70 frames a second. So this is a really, really easy way to draw this many meshes for free. And all you have to do is check the checkbox. Now, there are a lot of limitations and gotchas. If you're not getting the performance you think you should be, you're going to want to pop open your frame debugger here in the window frame debugger enable and take a look because what you'll see is like a long stand, a long set of these instance things here. You'll see a huge stack of them and there will be some kind of warning between them. These are not uh, giving me any warning because these are maxed out batches. These are as big as they can get. They're running flawlessly. The reason that it's not batched at the previous mesh uh, with the previous set is because 
that's as big as batches can get. But if there is a problem, you'll see something like this. Why can't this be batched? And here's an obvious one. Uh, objects have different materials. You can't batch things with different materials. You know that from static and dynamic batching. But there are some very weird ones for GPU instancing. Like, if an object is inside of the shadow range, it can't be batched with an object outside of the shadow range. And Unity will actively barf, because it doesn't optimize, it just kind of randomly draws objects, and so it'll randomly draw all of the ones that... It, instead, of, instead of going, okay, all the ones inside the shadow range get batched, and all the ones outside the shadow range get batched, it'll be like, here's an object, it's inside the shadow range. The next object I happen to see is outside, so that's the, that's the batch. And you'll get with like a thousand batches instead of ten. That's really obnoxious. Another one is if you have a negative axis in your scale, like your scale is just one axis is negative, that'll barf. There's a couple of things like that. So if you're running slow, just look in here, look for these instanced objects, and then just take a quick look and see why it's not batching properly. And it'll tell you. So this is really quite straightforward here, for example. Why this draw call can't be batched, rendering different meshes or submeshes with GPU instancing. That's because I'm using two materials on that. But you can see, you can track down these flaws. If you can't figure out what the flaw is, just do a search for it. It's been talked about online. You can certainly just look it up. Now, why would you want to use GPU instancing instead of something like um, static or dynamic batching? Because it's better like a lot better, like orders of magnitude and not just one order of magnitude, it's like hundred or thousand times better. Dynamic batching has a maximum vert count of 300. Like, yeah, right, I have, most of my meshes have more inverts than that, so that's not gonna happen. Um, static batching is a little bit better, but it's still not as good as GPU instancing. GPU instancing is a monster. So what other ways can you do this sort of instancing? Because there are some flaws with the way I'm doing it, not least of which is that I have hundreds of thousands of game objects in the scene. And this is not a great way to do it, especially if you plan to move any of these, because if you move them, then you get propagation where it has to tell all of the other objects in the same tree that it's moving, and then you get like this massive delay. So what other ways can you do it? Well, you can actually do it with... Um, with just these uh, uh, just these standard everyday particle systems. Particle systems are uh, also uh, seem to be using it just fine, as long as your particle material has instancing checked, and this one does not. Mm. However, particles have a severe drawback. Particle systems can only go up to 500,000 verts. And yeah, that sounds like a lot. It It's not, because I want to draw 500,000 objects. Well, what's another method? You can also do it manually. You can manually tell it to do this. And I can show you what that's like, because you notice there's something missing here. Boop, there it is. I manually tell it to draw these. I don't rely on any game objects or any Unity magic here. This is just me saying, can you draw these 500,000 game objects? Uh, 500,000 meshes, rather. So what is this? Well, this is one game object. And the game object is, I'll just seal this up here, there it is, debris system. And I've actually got four identical, nearly identical ones in operation here. Um, but this one has 10,000 objects in it with a radius of 100, and it's just setting this up automatically. So this one's 10,000, that one's, I think, 20,000. Um, just scattered all around the world, right? How does it work? Well, if we open this up and we take a look at our code, then we can see that I've got this seemingly annoyingly complicated code, but here's the secret. All you have to do is tell it when to draw. So what we're going to do is just highlight that. Graphics.drawInstanced. This can only draw 1,000 objects at a time, which is really obnoxious. I could use a more advanced feature like draw, mens draw mesh indirect and stuff like that, but um, this works okay. So all I do is I break it down into uh, 1,000 thousand by 1,000 by 1,000 unit batches. I've got some uh, complicated code in here because I'm doing some LOD stuff and some physics stuff as well, but this is all you really need. 
You tell it what mesh you're going to be drawing. You tell it what sub mesh you're going to be drawing. You tell it what material you want to use. And then you give it a long list of matrix 4x4s. Matrix 4x4 is the same thing that transforms are made out of. This isn't hard. You probably will never need to do it, though. It's something where you only need to do this if you're having problems. Now, why did I do it? I was having problems. The biggest problem I had is that that shadow range was really killing me. Whenever I moved from objects that were inside of shadow range and outside of shadow range, whenever I moved across that, that field, I was getting massive slowdown. I was getting thousands of batches. I was running at maybe 10 frames a second. This is flawless because I can tell it whether or not it should be finding shadows. So I say, don't look for shadows until you're inside of shadow range. Don't do any of this like half-assed, some inside of shadows, some outside of shadows. No, don't, don't do that. We're going to optimize it. And it optimized quite well. This runs very, very fast. And I have it at, I have it at 10,000 because that's just easy. But I could easily boot this up to uh, 50,000. Hit play. And we're still running at 60 frames a second. We took a noticeable frame hit. We're now dropping down just below 60, whereas before we were above 60. But we're now drawing an additional 40,000 objects on the scene. Pretty good, right? That's GPU instancing. And once you realize that this is possible, I think that you're going to want to use it a lot. Let me know if you have any questions or can't figure out how to do it in the uh, fields below.